Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create a reusable motor component in React. So, here are some examples of what we're going to be creating. So, you can see here, this is on the Envision website. Um, they have this gray, sort of dark, bluish background, backdrop, sorry. And then they have the modal itself, which is just a, you can think of it as like a pop-up. And then they have the content within it, and here they have a little button to close it. Um, so a modal is something you can use for, um, in this case, they use it for confirming a delete. You could also use it for a sign up or um, login. Here, a very common use is to create a um, newsletter sign up. So the user can just enter their email and then register for the newsletter. You could also do this for something like here, a form to ask questions. So this has many uses and you, you can definitely find a great use for it for in, in whatever React project you're making. So to get started, you want to open up your terminal. And um, I'm using the terminal inside my editor. And you want to type in npx create react app and then specify whatever directory. So here, this is just the um, base directory. Um, and then this will create the basic React boilerplate. So we don't have to deal with things like Webpack and Babel. Um, I've already run this. So as you can see, I've already run all this. Uh, so that's why I already have all the folders here. So this will just give you all the node dependencies, um, the public folder and the source files, which is where all of our JSX and our React components are going to go. So let's start up our development server by typing in npm run start. This is once again in your terminal. So here, if we go over to app.js, you'll see that, um, that all of this stuff here is what we're seeing on the uh, localhost 3000. So I'm just going to remove everything that we don't need. And I'm also going to reset the CSS. So I'm just going to put uh, margin 0 padding zero and box sizing of border box. Okay, so that's just some basic reset. And let me just make it bigger. So um, the first thing I wanna do is just create the basic um, JSX and the styling, and then we'll get into the logic. So we're gonna be do this, doing this using React hooks, and then we're also gonna be using references. So to get started, let's just create a button. Uh, we're just gonna say open modal. And I'm going to put an on click on here, although it's not going to do much right now. So it's just going to be open modal. And let's create the function for that. And I'm going to be using arrow functions. And for now, I'm just going to have it say console log open modal. So now, if I open up my console, if I click the button, we get open modal. Okay, so now let's create the actual modal component. So I'm just going to create a new file called modal.js and import react. And just remember to export it as default as well. Okay, so the basic JSX that we want for this is going to consist of a wrapper, which is going to wrap our entire app, our entire component, sorry. So I'm just going to call this modal wrapper. We want a div for the actual content, which is going to be the box. So let's say modal box. And then adjacent to the modal box, we also want a empty div, which is just going to be the backdrop. So modal backdrop. So we have these three divs. And then within the modal box, I just want whatever, whatever content that we put in. So I'm just going to do props.children. And also remember to get props here. So to get started with the styling, let's start off with the modal wrapper. So I'm just going to give this a position of fixed. So it's always going to be um, at the same spot, which I want to be the whole screen. So I'm just going to say top, top zero, bottom zero, left zero, and right zero. And then I also want to, actually we don't need to put a Z index on this, but we will have to put a Z index on the actual content. So let's do the backdrop next. And it's actually going to be exactly the same as this. Let's give this a Z index of about 100. And let's also give this a background color. So I'm just going to say black with a 30% opacity. So now if we just import this in our app uh, component, so modal, we now see we have the uh, dark black um, back backdrop. And now let's actually add in the content as well, the styling for the content. So 
So I want this one to be position relative. Uh, top 50%, left 50%. So centered. And then we also want to make sure to transform and translate minus 50%, minus 50%. Let's give this a height of about 60% and a width of about 60, but let's just change the height actually to about 70. Let's give this a background color of just white and a box shadow to make it sort of stand out, uh, which is just gonna be a 10 pixel blur with, a, with an opacity of about let's say 25% oh and remember this is box shadow not sizing so we also want to remember to uh, put a, a z index on this one as well which is higher than the one of the backdrop so we can just put 101 and now you can see it's on top of it so i just also want to put a overflow uh y of auto and then this way if our content um, gets bigger than this we'll just have a little scroll bar here instead of having it actually go off the page, off the screen. Let's also add a padding of about 40 pixels. And then let's add some content now. So I'm just going to open this modal component up, put a H1 saying modal header, and then some lorem ipsum. So now we have some basic content here and uh, what actually I think the height is a bit too much so let's just say this is uh, min height of 30% so now it's nice and that the content actually fits the box so now we have the actual modal here and we have the button let's start uh, creating some logic so the first thing I want to do is to be able to click on this backdrop and close this modal so let's create some state to handle whether the modal is open or not so I'm just going to say show and set show. Actually, it probably displays better. And we're going to be using React hook use states. And initially, I want this to be closed. Actually, for now, just temporarily, I'm going to set this to true, just so we can click on the backdrop and actually close it, because we have no way of um, showing this right now. And let's say let's create two functions. So open, which is just going to set display to true and close which is just going to set display to false so now when we click on this i want to put it on click here and just close so I'll call this close function here so now we have to also remember to add in the conditional so if um display so if we're showing it and it's true we just want to return all of this. Otherwise, I uh, just return null. So now here, initially it's true, so we're showing it. We click on the backdrop and it goes away. So now I want to add the functionality to be able to actually click on this open modal button and then actually show the modal. To do that, I actually want to use references. And before I actually use references, there's one thing I just forgot, is that when we look at this component now, if we were to look at the um, the HTML, you can see that modal, if I was to refresh it and uh, show it again, modal is actually here. You can see the div for modal wrapper is actually nested. But I don't want it to be nested. I actually want it to be next to the uh, root div. So we can actually use, um, we can create a link between a div that we can create here and the modal component. And that might sound a bit confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. So if, if we import React DOM from React DOM, and if we also open up our public and then go over to the index.html, I'm just going to remove all of these comments. So here, I'm going to create another div and just give this the ID of modal root. So I want to attach the modal wherever we call it, even no matter how far nested down it is, I want to always have it attached to this um, modal root div. So to do that, all we can do is use from React on the create portal. So I'm going to do this in the display block. So React DOM dot create portal. And the first one, as you can see here, the first parameter that we have to give this 
is the React child node, meaning this. So all of this JSX. And then the second one is actually the DOM node. So this um, specific DOM node here uh, with the ID of modal root. So to do this, I'll just show you guys how it would actually look. We can just put all of this into here. And this might not look too clean, so I'll just make sure it looks better. And also make sure to return this. And then for the second parameter, I want to to actually get this um this div here with the ID of modal root. So to do that, we can just use document dot get element by ID modal root. So now, if I was to open this up again. You can see here we have modal root, which actually has modal wrapper inside it. So you see now we are, we are indeed connecting. We're creating a link between the modal component and this modal root DOM node, so that this modal um, component will always be nested within the modal root DOM node. So this means that no matter how far down we call this modal component, it will always be linked directly to modal root. So that's just something um, small but quite nice. So now let's actually move on to being able to open and close this, or specifically open this using the open modal button. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to create a reference. So modal reference, and we're going to be using react.useRef. So I want to pass this reference down um, to the modal component, but you'll actually notice this gives us an error, saying we need to use the forward ref. So if I open up the console, you can say you can see it says. Function com components cannot be given refs. Attempt to access this ref will fail. Did you mean to use react.forwardref? And we are indeed going to use react.forwardref. So in the modal component, I want to, I'm going to um, first import forwardref. And then to use it, we have to wrap our entire application, our entire um, component, sorry, in the forwardref. So I'm just going to cut this, write forwardref, and then within here, I'm just going to paste. The component in so uh, the uh, syntax highlighting may, might be a bit strange but I just literally copy and pasted the modal component in here and as normal our first um, parameter that we get is still props but the second one we actually get now is the ref now this ref doesn't work the same way as it does in class components so you might have to think of this a little bit differently but with the ref what we can do is we can attach methods to it using the um, use imperative handle function. So what we can do is say use imperative handle and this takes two parameters. The first one is the ref. So this is going to be this one. So we're passing this ref down here to use imperative handle and then the second parameter is actually going to be a function where what we return from the function will be passed into the ref. So a way that you can think of this is if, if I create this function here and I return return object. Whatever I return here, so this object will be put into ref. And because here we specify ref is equal to modal ref, whatever we put inside here, so this return will be put directly into modal ref. So that's how I want you guys to think of it. it might sound a bit confusing, but I'll show you guys an example. So if I say test method, and I set this equal to console log. Um, actually, I'm going to set this to a sync uh, anonymous function. Console log testing modal ref. So now, when I click this button, I want to console log modal ref. So now, when I cl click this, you can see we have this object here. If I open up the object and I open up the current, you can see we have this test method, which is a anonymous function. And if I expand this a little bit, you'll see that this actually is the console log for testing modal ref. So what we could do is say modal ref dot current dot, and then I called this um, test method. And then if I if I call this, it should console log, even without wrapping it here. It should just console log testing modal ref. So let's give that a try. So you can see here we're getting testing modal ref whenever we click this. So now you already might be able to see what we can do with this. So what we can do 
is say open modal and then set this equal to an anonymous function which is going to call open and then we can also create a close in case we want to use that somewhere else and just call close so this open refers to this function here and this close refers to this function here so passing them into this um, reference as methods and then we have access to these methods in the modal ref.current so now if I just once again console log the modal ref dot current you can see we have the open modal and close modal so specifically I want the open modal and then if I remove the console log now what should happen is when we click this we're going to call this method right here which is then going to call open which is going to set the display to true which is then going to um, create a link between the component here or this JSX we have here and the modal root component sorry the modal root DOM node in the index.html so that might sound a bit confusing but I'll just show you guys so I click this and now we have it open and as you can see here in modal root we have indeed connected it so that is just the basics of how you'd create a modal and a quick use case for how you might um, use the close let's say in here we had a button so this is inside the modal um, children saying close modal we can just put on click I'm just going to do it as a uh, anonymous function here so modal ref dot current dot uh, close modal ah, just close not close modal so now I click open modal and then here this button this close modal button will trigger this close um, this close method here which will trigger this close function and set the display to false and yeah you can see that it works fine so this is a really really simple reusable modal component that you can use in all your projects not just in one specific project you can see it's very flexible you can change all the styling you can um, choose exactly what components go inside of it and you can even um, hook the component into the modal root so hopefully um, this wasn't too confusing with the references here I'll just go through it one more time the forward ref is just going to wrap your entire component and the first um, and then it returns a normal anonymous function like this where the first parameter you get is your props same as normal but the second one you get is the actual ref and then you can use the react method use imperative handle and connect to your ref uh, an object containing methods which are functions inside of your component so these methods here could do anything but in my case I wanted to connect them to these two functions here which are the functionality to open and close this modal method this modal component sorry so I hope that wasn't too complicated if you guys want me to go through it in more detail about how this forward ref works in react hooks compared to how it works in class components um, then please let me know hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching